On this episode of the Catholic Echo Podcast from the Diocese of Youngstown, we're talking about a holiday blues, sadness and grief during the holidays with Bishop David Bonner and Sister Pat Fessler. Find more about this episode's topic, including articles from the Catholic Echo at catholicecho.org slash podcast. And now the host of the Catholic Echo Podcast, Father Jim Corda. Hello and welcome to the Catholic Echo Podcast. I'm your host, Father Jim Corda. Our show is brought to you by the annual Diocesan Appeal, the Catholic Communication Campaign, and Cumulus Media Youngstown. Welcome to our show. With me is Bishop David Bonner. What we are going to focus on now is what I like to call the holiday blues. You know, we're just a few weeks away to celebrating Christmas. Anytime we celebrate a holiday, whether it's Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, whatever it is, there's a lot of people that tend to regress and tend to kind of like isolate themselves. And some of those people that do that are us as priests. Why is it important, first of all, to recognize the fact that we're human and that we do go through difficult times? Absolutely. Andy Williams reminds us with the carol, it's the most wonderful time of the Mm -hmm. year. For many people in the service industry, including priests, Mm -hmm. it can be the most stressful time of the year. And I think that it's imperative that everyone, especially our priests, have a sense for where they're at. The holidays can not only be a source of stress, but they can be a trigger, a trigger for anger, for hurt, for disillusionment. And for grief, I think that, you know, that first Christmas without mom or without Mm -hmm. dad for Mm -hmm. any of us is a real act of faith. It can be a real challenging time. You know, as you were talking, one thing that comes to mind is that there's a sense that we have to allow ourselves to grieve whatever happens, whether it's the death of a loved one or the loss of a job or we're moving to another state or another country, whatever that transition is or whatever that hurt is is in our life. But we have to, at some point, pick ourselves up and move beyond that. Sometimes that takes professional care and professional help. In our next couple segments, we're going to talk with somebody who works primarily with grieving families, especially during the time of loss. Why is it important for us to rely on professionals sometimes to help us through things? We need people to help us because grief is so heavy, we can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. But it all begins by just saying, you know, I am Mm grief-stricken. I remember when my mother died back in 2001. I grew up in Pennsylvania where there's state inspections. Mm -hmm. And after her death, I drove around in my car with an expired inspection sticker for nearly four months, just Uh totally oblivious. And I would get in my car and see that every day, but I didn't see it. Mm -hmm. Grief Mm -hmm. can really blind us. So it's important that we name the grief. And then, you know, when my father died a year later, I was really just overcome with a terrible sense of being alone. And so Mm -hmm. one of the things that I did, I never saw this coming, was I got a little dog. Mm -hmm. And that dog rescued me from my grief for 12 years. It was one of the best things I could have done. Well, I think that says something about companionship and about, and we've talked many times about accompaniment, you know, whether it's another human being, whether it's an animal, a service animal, a pet, you know, we need as human beings, we need that closeness. We need that accompaniment because if not, we tend to live in isolation and no human can really live in isolation. So when we experience difficult times, especially around the holidays, we need to reach out to others. Reaching out sometimes is not an easy thing, especially for us as priests. What is built within our makeup that tells us sometimes that I can handle it myself, I'll take care of it? Well, I think first and foremost, we're men. Mm. And, you know, we'd like to think we're tough Mm. and that we don't need anything. And if there is something wrong, we think we can fix it ourselves. But it doesn't work that way with grief. And the holidays have such a way of exacerbating the Mm -hmm. grief, the heaviness, the loss, the sense of the burden we carry. We can run away with our ministry to the extent that we run away from our grief. Mm -hmm. You know, oftentimes I think we do that. We tend to 
take on more work because that kind of masks some of the difficulty or some of the sadness that we might be experiencing, and we think that that's going to help. What it does is eventually we get kind of burned out or we get overwhelmed, and we really need to step back. If we're fortunate, we have people in our lives that help us do that. Sometimes when we live in isolation, or unfortunately because many priests now have several responsibilities, not just one, what are some of those built-in efforts that the diocese can offer or you can offer to assist our priests in the multiple tasks that they have? So I hope that our priests know that I'm only a phone call away, that I'm here along with our clergy office, Father Balish. We're here to help them, to accompany them. I think that we also have access to counselors. Mm -hmm. I know in my own life, after my parents died, I eventually went into counseling mm -hmm. because I was throwing myself into work. Sure. I became a workaholic. Mm -hmm. And what a saving grace that relationship mm -hmm. became for me. And I would invite anyone who's struggling to, by all means, consider talking to a counselor. It can make all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. And then we have access to life coaches as well mm -hmm. that can mm -hmm. help people with reorganizing their lives in a time of in which there was an earthquake of some kind, of, an emotional earthquake. Those are just some of the things that we can offer. I think the other thing, and I had mentioned this in another episode, is that we really shouldn't shy away from difficult times and tough times because they're bound to happen. They're inevitable in your life, in my life, and in everyone's life. So naming that, first of all, I think is important. But second of all, to know that everyone goes through difficult times. Everyone experiences dark moments. But what happens is that we have to see the light, proverbial light at the end of the tunnel. Why is it so important for us to do that? But why is it difficult for some people to see that light? I think fear. Mm -hmm. I think pride. I think shame. I think all of those things come into play. You know, I always say the first part of life is easy because we learn how to play nice and get along with other people. But the second part of life is all about learning how to live with oneself, mm -hmm. the good, the bad, and the ugly. And the longer we live in this world, the more history there is, and not all of which is good history. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's a matter of learning to live with ourselves, to love ourselves, and when needed, to seek the help that we need. And I think it's important for us to let people know that it's okay to have difficult days. It's okay to have tough times, but the truth is that we need to search out those who can help us through those tough times or see the light in the dark moments. And so we certainly would encourage the folks that are with us, if they feel so needed, to seek professional guidance and help. Go to your pastor if you have a spiritual issue or problem. Perhaps he can help you or at least guide you and advise you on where you can go for further help. Be open to the presence of others who can help us through these tough times. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The new Catholic Echo podcast will inform and entertain the faithful of the diocese by discussing various topics that are relevant in the church today. Bishop David J. Bonner begins the podcast with your host, Father Jim Corda, on the topic of the day, and then you'll hear from others with expertise on that topic. You can listen to the Catholic Echo podcast on Sundays at 6.30 a.m., on WHOTFM 101, WYFM FM 102.9, WQXK FM 105.1, or catch it online by going to catholicecho.org slash podcast. The Catholic Echo Podcast is produced by the Communications Department of the Diocese of Youngstown. Wondering what happened to timely Catholic news in the Diocese of Youngstown? It's at catholicecho.org. There you'll find recent stories about Catholic life in all six counties of the Diocese of Youngstown, plus recent videos, podcasts, and even national and global news. You'll find it all at catholicecho.org under the News tab. Sign up for the email newsletter while you're there to have Catholic news delivered to your inbox.
Welcome back to our show. With me is Sister Pat Fessler, who is a grief support specialist at Higgins Reardon Funeral Homes and also pastoral assistant at Zion Lutheran Church in Cornersburg. Welcome to our show. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. You know, Sister Pat, last time we had the opportunity to talk was one of our television shows where we spent some time talking about grief and people in despair and what a tremendous opportunity it is for us as people of faith to provide a service to them. And we know that through the funeral home, through Zion Lutheran, that you provide for many years now this counseling in the area of grief. Why is it so important for us to be mindful that people are grieving? I think so often people forget about their grief and shelf it because they're so afraid to deal with it. They don't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. But it's so important to deal with it and to be able to look at all of the things that have gone on since that person has died. It changes our lives. It doesn't make any difference who it is. But we forget Mm -hmm. that grief changes our lives and makes us a different person. Now, it doesn't mean that we're going to be that person forever. Mm -hmm. And there is no set time for grief. And so we have to give ourselves the time that we need to grief, Mm -hmm. to be able to talk to others about our loved one. Mm -hmm. Then you find out who your friends are when you're grieving. Mm, Sure. It's not unusual Mm -hmm. to have people say to you after a couple months, It's time for you to move on and go on with your life. But that doesn't happen. Grief takes time. You know, it's interesting as you were talking, a personal experience that I had several years ago, I had an uncle who died on Christmas Day. And every time Christmas comes around, we think of him. And so why is it for us as human beings when the holidays come, you know, we're on the hills of Christmas now, we're going to be coming up to Easter, and then we have Thanksgiving, and we have this holiday and that holiday. Why is it around the holidays that those images and those emotions kind of bubble up in us? Especially when a person dies on a holiday or real close to a holiday. My favorite grandfather died when I was six years old, and I will tell you, I relive it every year. Mm-hmm. And I'm much older now, (laughs) and it's not an unusual thing for that to happen because we ask, how do we do this without them? Mm -hmm. But we can. Very often, it's leading up to the holiday itself is much harder than the holiday, Mm -hmm. and I say that to people all the time, and they'll say, oh my gosh, the holiday gets here, and it's like... It wasn't as bad as I thought, but that is extremely difficult. There's something about Christmas. So many people, we think it's like that's the biggest holiday, Mm -hmm. but every holiday is big and is important, Mm -hmm. but we forget. And when that happens, we have to step back and look at that person that they were. And I say to people all the time, Journal about them. Mm -hmm. Write them a letter, Mm -hmm. no matter how long ago it's been. I had to change password the other day. And what did I change? I put in somewhere in it, fave gramps. Mm -hmm. And it's like like we keep them a part of us. Mm -hmm. We keep others that have died a part of us. But there's something about that, Mm -hmm. that they are so in our spirits, in our hearts. You know, I'd like to talk about another facet of grief, and that is not just in the area of death and dying, but grief over lost relationships, losing a job, being transferred, whatever that is. There are all these different grief moments in our lives that happened that we have difficult time dealing with. What are some of those specific grief moments that we should be aware of? Job change, moving, especially if we're moving out of state, Mm -hmm. change of schools for kids. Mm -hmm. That's a big grief moment. And I think we forget kids 
grieve too. Mm -hmm. Kids and teens. And we need to look at all of those grief moments. A divorce. A friend. I mean, I think people forget when a friend dies, Mm -hmm. we have to grieve that. And that is so important. It's like, oh, it's just a friend. No, it's not just a friend. Mm -hmm. It is a friend. Sometimes friends are closer than family. Mm -hmm. And we need to be able to grieve all of those. Loss of a job and not knowing where you're going to go. Not having any money is a big grief Mm -hmm. issue for families. Mm -hmm. How do I feed my kids? Where are we going to live? You know, when we talk about grief and loved ones, there's this whole sense of remembering. And for us as human beings, remembering is probably one of the greatest gifts that we have. What happens when we experience older individuals who are losing the gift of remembering? Isn't that a grieving thing too? Oh, absolutely. When people have dementia, Alzheimer's, that is a big loss. Families don't know how to deal with that. And sometimes just keep going back and talking to them, showing them pictures from their past when their kids were little, their own growing up. Very often they know about their past. Mm -hmm. It's recent that they don't remember. Mm -hmm. And one thing I always say to people is when a person can't communicate to you or you think they don't know you Mm -hmm. they always know your voice Mm -hmm. and they always know your touch Mm -hmm. if people want to get a hold of you or your services where do they go how do they contact you they can call higgins reardon at 330-792-2353 they can call zion lutheran at 330-792-4046 Also, I do articles, and they're on both websites at Higgins Reardon and Zion Lutheran. Higgins Reardon has it all, puts it on the Facebook page, and that is really important. Okay. Well, Sister Pat Fessler, we're going to take a quick break, and then in a moment come back and talk a little bit more about this important issue of grief, especially during the holiday seasons. Stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. Did you know that the Catholic Echo magazine is delivered 10 times per year to 52,000 Catholic households in Northeastern Ohio? That's more than 150,000 people. And the Catholic Echo website, catholicecho.org, has been averaging 30,000 views per month since it launched in February 2023. Advertise your business, special event, or service with the Catholic Echo in print or online. Email catholicecho at youngstowndiocese.org. Advertising discounts are available for Catholic institutions as well as for businesses that commit to five or ten issues in a year. Email catholicecho at youngstowndiocese.org or visit the Advertising tab at catholicecho.org for more information. The Catholic Echo magazine is delivered free of charge to anyone who is registered at a parish in the Diocese of Youngstown, but subscriptions are also available for non-parishioners. A subscription costs $40 per year, and you can buy one for yourself or gift a subscription to a loved one. Email catholicecho at youngstowndiocese.org for more information. If you have a story idea for the Catholic Echo magazine, podcast, or website, send an email to catholicecho at youngstowndiocese.org. We'd love to hear your ideas. Welcome back to our show. I'm talking with Sister Pat Fessler, who is pastoral assistant at Zion Lutheran Church in Cornersburg and also a grief support specialist at Higgins Rudin Funeral Homes. Sister Pat, what I'd like us to talk about in this segment is you've been so involved grief counseling for several decades, but prior to that, you worked 
at the hospital and you were a chaplain, you were kind of on the ground level of working with people in healthcare ministry. How has that transitioned into this work, into grief counseling? One of the things is I've done death and dying my whole life. Mm -hmm. When I was at St. E's, my specialties were oncology, intensive care, and trauma. And I worked with, back then, people were in the hospital for a very long time. And I worked with so many people that were dying Mm -hmm. and journeyed with them and listened to them. Mm -hmm. And I think that has, when I left St. E's in 2000, it was like I knew I still needed to keep doing what I do. And that's why... I went to a funeral home looking for, because I'm not a licensed counselor, but I am a grief support specialist, which is so important for a funeral home for us to have and to be able to offer that, because how many people don't realize the importance of that? Mm -hmm. And I think it carries over so very, very well. And I think that word that you use, journeying with someone, is really so important Mm -hmm. because there are many people who walk alone these days. Yes. And especially during the holiday season, whether it's Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, birthdays, anniversaries, when they're walking alone, Mm -hmm. that sense of grief and despair gets even more difficult in their lives. Mm -hmm. Why is it important for people to talk about their grief? Because oftentimes we're just so reticent to talk about it. Mm -hmm. We just want to keep it to ourselves. And there, quite frankly, are people that do that. But why is it important to get that out, to journey with someone to help us? I think it is so important to get those feelings out, Mm -hmm. to be able to talk about that person that has died, not leave it and just sit at home and cry and pull a blanket up over your head. But we need to talk about it. We need to find that person that we know will journey with us because that is so important. Another thing I always say to people is write their life story. Write your loved one's life story. None of us, when I do funeral services, I say it at the end of every service, none of us want to be forgotten when we die. Mm -hmm. And so why not write that life story of that person and be able to pass it on to grandchildren, nieces and nephews, because that is a way, and share that with your friends. Mm -hmm. Maybe share that with someone that you're really close to. You didn't know this about my mom, but let me tell you about it. Or the person, if you're going to someone, whether it's someone like me or a professional counselor, that you say, let me tell you all about my mom, my dad, my husband, my child. And I'd like to talk about young people and teens because, as we had mentioned in the segment before, they do grieve as well. In your experience working with younger people, is it different? Do you use different skills or is it the same? Let me tell you, working with young people (laughs) is very interesting. Little kids grieve one way, but parents will say they're fine. They're not fine. Mm -hmm. Young people and teens, and they tell me this all the time, they're not going to talk to their parents. Mm -hmm. They will talk to others that are in their shoes Mm -hmm. and... Their grief changes when they become a teenager. As they get older, it just takes on a totally new spin. I had a six-year-old that was with me when her dad died and stayed with me for several years, and then she quit coming for a while. And when she became 12, she said to her grandma, I need to go back. Hmm. And she said to the group, and, and they all say this, it's different now. And yeah, a lot of times they lead the discussion. It's not always me because they know what helped them. Yes, I can give them points, but they know what has helped them and what has hurt them through their grief. 
what they go through in schools. And we talk about that a lot because a lot of kids that have had a parent die have kids call them the child without a mom, the child without a dad. And that is so hard. And we talk about that a lot. You know, there's a lot of people who find themselves alone for the holidays. And some prefer to be alone, but some, they are not necessarily by choice, but Mm -hmm. because of Mm -hmm. the way life is for them. Why is it important for us as human beings to have that companionship, to have people around, especially during the holiday seasons, and especially when we're experiencing this grief or this sense of depression? It's good to have somebody with us to be able to, because who knows what we want to talk about Mm. for the holidays. Sometimes people want to be by themselves, or sometimes they only want to be with somebody for a half hour and then go back home. Mm. But it's important to be with people. And one of the things that I always think is really important to do is to light a candle Mm. with your loved ones or with your friends. If you're by yourself, light it by yourself. But it's important to be with people. And light that candle for faith, Mm -hmm. for hope, for peace, for joy, and for love. Because all of us are here today because of love, Mm -hmm. hopefully. Mm -hmm. And we need to be able to journey with our family and have our family not protect us, but be able to listen to us as best as they can. And us as well. And I like the idea of bringing the element of faith in because, you know, for us as human beings, sometimes that's all we have. That's right. And having that for many of us is enough Mm -hmm. to have that faith, but it does help us. It does protect us, but we can't discount the presence of other people and other human beings. Just one final comment, Sister Pat, before we close. I think... Compassion, faith, hope, and love are key. And I think being able to journey with someone in a real way, not a fake way, really interested in what they're saying and able to hear their pain and walk with them and not say, I don't want to hear you anymore. Move on, but be able to listen. And how can they contact you? They can contact me at Higgins Reardon at 330-792-2353, Zion Lutheran at 330-792-4046. Sister Pat Fessler, thank you for being with us. Thank you so very much for having me. For those who would like more information or to listen again to the show, you can go to www.catholicecho.org. The Catholic Echo Podcast is a production of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Youngstown in cooperation with Cumulus Media Youngstown. I'm your host, Father Jim Corda. Have a blessed day and may God be with you.